Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm Jun Nishida from the University of Chicago. And this work has been done with the uh, colleagues from the University of Tsukuba in Japan uh, with the support of JST and JSPS. So the title is uh, Egocentric Smaller Person Experience Through a Change in Visual Perspective. So the question in this research is uh, how can we share one's uh, experience in a daily life, a particularly smaller person's experience, in more embodied, social, and egocentric manner? So to tackle this question, uh, we have developed a wearable device that can change your visual perspective into a lower, uh, uh, lower position. So wearers can uh, observe the surrounding world from the lower stature. Then they can understand how children perceive uh, a smaller person uh, uh, perceive the world. Okay, so this system consists, uh, consists of a uh, wearable uh, stereo camera with fish eye, uh, fish eye cameras and head one display uh, to provide uh, real-time uh, videos from the lower stage. The important thing is that the, the wearer can uh, control their field of view by using their own head, own head orientation. Uh, in real time. So the visual translator device equips uh, two, uh, two 180 degree fish eye cameras and microphones and motion sensor to detect uh, the wearer's body, uh, body orientations. The software is configured by an uh, open frameworks environment uh, which creates uh, stereo, rec uh, stereo rec rectified images from the captured uh, spherical images from the uh, fish eye cameras. The latency was measured as around 120 milliseconds, which is still sufficient for preserving the uh, agency uh, uh, of the user's actions. Uh, for more details, uh, please read our paper. So as for applications, uh, our device can be used as an educational tool for uh, teach, uh, nursing school teachers, uh, medical staff, and parents and also as a design assistive tool for uh, designers for stores, classrooms, or exhibitions. Actually, uh, we have already uh, tested these scenarios uh, in a nursing school and hospital, so please take a look at this video. <laughs> <laughs> so now uh, let me explain uh, how our research can be defined uh, through the related works review. So actually, there are several uh, attempts to create a sense of being a, a child in the field of design to provide a design guideline for children or like elderly persons. So one study proposed uh, the methodology of using a fixed camera at the low, uh, lower uh, point of view uh, to uh, evaluate the accessibility for the uh, children in a public space. Uh, Honda Motor uh, Company provides a cardboard gogu to reproduce a child's uh, narrow perspective uh, to help uh, car drivers to uh, understand how children perceive the uh, load environment. And also, uh, MIT H Lab developed an elderly suit which degrades your visual and motor uh, capabilities to uh, reproduce the elderly's experience and help the uh, evaluation of the accessibility uh, in transportation system. And uh, in psychological studies, uh, many studies have investigated how uh, perception is modified when their body ownership is transferred to a small door or a shorter arm or a, short, a smaller avatar in a virtual environment. And they reported uh, that having emb embodiment of a child influences uh, object size perception and di uh, distance uh, perception, uh, self-identification, and even speaking behaviors. But users' experience might be passive or static when they use a rubber hand illusion technique. And also using the virtual uh, environment uh, makes it difficult to have uh, embodied and social interactions uh, with people in an existing real world. 
So if we think uh, such plot with uh, a passive and active uh, axis on the horizontal and uh, real and vir virtual uh, axis on vertical, so related works can, can be a place like this. A uh, study with uh, rubber hand illusion technique uh, where users have to uh, receive the uh, tactile simulation while sitting or laying down on the floor could be a passive experience uh, in a real environment. On the other hand, having a, uh, uh, having a child's embodiment in VR uh, could uh, isolate from the real uh, and physical uh, uh, relationship. So uh, actually our uh, study places here where users, users experience uh, is uh, more active and embodied while involving uh, social interactions uh, in a real world environment. Then uh, we would like to explore it is uh, possibilities and challenges uh, for gaining embodied knowledge of a smaller person's experience in a real world environment. So uh, what we are uh, actually we are trying to do in this research is uh, shaping body uh, representation into that of another in a real world uh, for acquiring the embodied knowledge of one's experience. So this interaction style allows uh, users to uh, reach to real people and objects. Therefore, uh, existing physical or social uh, knowledge uh, in your classroom, uh, workspace, or home uh, can be also used to understand uh, how user's body has changed by, compare, uh, by comparing. Uh, this allows more, uh, more active and social interactions, and we believe that the, uh, such environment uh, provides a more authentic uh, embodied uh, experience. So to verify the shaping of the body representation and also to explore how it changes one's experience, uh, we investigated these three important factors. Uh, which is uh, the changes in the user's perception, action, and interaction by shaping body uh, representation in your world, real world environment. So let's start from the perceptual experiment. So in this experiment, uh, we performed a personal space evaluation. So objective of this experiment is to evaluate uh, how a changing eye height uh, changes the interpersonal relationship in a real world. So personal space is defined as a physical space surrounding someone into which the other's uh, proximity can feel uh, uncomfortable. Uh, this is a very uh, important factor uh, that represents a social relationship between two persons. So in this experiment, uh, we observed the changes in his uh, personal space with or without uh, changing uh, height or perspective. perspective. So here shows uh, experiment uh, set up uh, we used a stop distance method to measure the personal space, uh, which is commonly used in uh, psychological uh, studies. And there are uh, two important conditions. The one is standing uh, while camera is placed on the head, and the other is standing while camera is placed on the waist position. So we recruited nine nursery teachers, and experiment was conducted in a, a nursery classroom. So the, uh, here shows the result, and uh, it shows that the shifting down the uh, shifting the eye level down uh, significantly enlarged uh, uh, their personal space. And participants also mentioned that the approaching experimenter uh, looks bigger than usual. Also, they uh, stated that uh, they want to stand up on uh, tiptoe uh, to make their perspective higher. Uh, from these results, uh, lower perspective uh, could create uh, an intimidating feeling uh, toward uh, approaching the person, approaching person. Also, uh, from their comments, uh, they wanted to move their perspective higher, even though uh, they, they are already standing. Uh, such post posture and visual mismatch could uh, also uh, affect the, their uh, sense of personal space. So the next is uh, action experiment. So in this experiment, uh, we try to figure, uh, we try to verify the shaping of body representation uh, from the user's interesting uh, actions, uh, which we call uh, air handshake illusion. So when we are doing the exhibitions, uh, we found that uh, many visitors raise their hands higher than usual when uh, experimenter try to have a handshake. And uh, we saw that uh, this is caused by the uh, perceived shorter height 
And this could be used as an index uh, to evaluate the strength or level of the shaping of the body representation. Also, uh, we wanted to know how active uh, interactions, which is a field of view uh, control uh, in this case, uh, affects the change in uh, body, how, how it affects the change in body representation. Then we saw that the uh, hand gap during the handshake action can be used for the uh, evaluation method. So here shows the uh, setup. So there are two important conditions. The one is a passive video condition, which is uh, watching a video without uh, having a field of view control, uh, then perform a handshake with a man in a video. The other is to, uh, uh, is uh, active FOV control uh, condition, which is the participants observe the uh, same experimenter through the camera system with the uh, field of view control capability, then perform the handshake with a real man. And uh, here shows the results, and it shows that the participant raised their uh, hand high, uh, higher, uh, significantly higher, when they can control uh, their field of view. Also, uh, they looked up uh, significantly higher uh, when they can control uh, their field of view. So from these results, uh, it is suggested that the active field of view control uh, actions uh, enhanced the shaping of the body, re body representation. Uh, it was also observed that uh, some uh, participants extended their arm longer than usual. They could perceive their uh, perceived as their uh, arm length be uh, be had become uh, become shorter. So actually, such phenomena was uh, also reported in a virtual environment. Then this could be uh, verified uh, in a real environment as well. So lastly, uh, we conducted an uh, interaction experiment. So in this experiment, uh, as showed in the uh, beginning, uh, we did uh, observation and collected uh, questionnaire feedback at uh, nursing schools, uh, hospitals, and conference exhibitions. So we asked participants to answer a Likert questionnaire about uh, perceived uh, height and surroundings and feelings. The results show that the, uh, their perceived height became shorter and also perceived size of the surrounding became larger. And they reported that they felt intimidating. So this would indicate that the device modified their experience. We also asked participants to answer their uh, body representation from these figures. And the 6% uh, of participants stated that <clears throat> Perceived height became shorter, and some reported that uh, only their head moved to their waist position. So this could be caused because of the spatial mismatch of the eyes and hand in the system. But anyway, these show, uh, these show that the visual device achieved, the, uh, achieved to create a lower perspective and a sense of shorter height. And interestingly, uh, during the observation, uh, we could see many uh, interesting activities, such as a uh, surprise reaction or a protective pose from the experimenter or childlike talking uh, and intimidating action by the surrounding people to the wearer. So these are not actually a controlled, uh, experiment, uh, controlled experiment setup. However, uh, not only the uh, wearer, but also the surrounding people could change their interaction style including attitude or conversation. We would like to verify this phenomena with more controlled setup in the future. So uh, in conclusion, uh, we provided uh, possibilities and challenges of uh, changing our perspective by shaping our body, uh, body representation. To achieve this, uh, we did uh, interaction design to provide embodied, social, and egocentric uh, smaller person experience and to achieve this experience, uh, we developed a visual translator device. Uh, that uh, device while preserving the uh, field of view control capability. And we also verified that users' perception, uh, action, and interaction was, uh, were modified while allowing the active and social interactions with other people in a real world environment. And also, not only the wearer, but also uh, surrounding people could gain the embodied knowledge of the smaller person's experience. 
So actually, uh, we also developed a fast hand exoskeleton like this that changed the scale of, of the hand, the hand dimensions to reproduce a haptic pers perspective of a smaller persons, uh, that of smaller persons for assisting more embodied uh, product design uh, procedure by adult designers. Uh, we hope we can uh, report the effect of combining this visual and haptic uh, perspective transformation in near future. So actually, uh, this device is, uh, the demo is available on our interactivity booth, so uh, if you ha have time, please come uh, and enjoy. Uh, that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. All right, so we have microphones here, here, and then in the middle. So, I mean, um, so I, I'm going to ask one then. Um, so I, it seemed mostly the, most of the interaction actually happened by the person approaching the person bearing the head, the head mounted display. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering what kinds of interactions do you think you can actually explore as a small, like as a minified person in this egocentric view, because the hand is an issue, mm -hmm. you can only uh, walk towards things, but it seems relatively limited, the interactions that you can explore that way, mm -hmm. your own interactions. Yeah, so uh, as I showed in the last slide, uh, we are also considering some haptic, pers uh, haptic perspective translation, uh, transformation, and uh, actually uh, the device is uh, configured in a wearable form factor, and so uh, the, uh, the wearers can uh, freely walk around in an existing environment and freely uh, uh, able to have uh, interaction with the surroundings. So uh, I hope uh, we can uh, find uh, another new findings with the uh, long term or another uh, experiment parameters. Hi, uh, Dorothy Schmidt from Salzburg University. Thank you for your talk, very interesting work. Thank you very much. Um, I was wondering, I've, I've looked at your paper a little bit because I'm looking into similar things uh, as well. And I was wondering, so if I understood correctly, you're using basically a 180 degree field of view yep. and then low passing the sides. Um, do you think that had an influence on uh, the level of immersion and sense of presence? And if so, do you think you could speculate that um, if you had a 360 view, the mm -hmm. effect would be even greater? Yeah, uh, thank you uh, for your question. So uh, we, uh, as you said, uh, we use the uh, 180 degrees fisheye lens uh, with uh, full HD output. And uh, we actually, we crop uh, in a certain area, then rectify, and then display on the head-on display. So the resolution is uh, not so much uh, high. But so in terms of that, uh, 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 the, the presence uh, in a uh, head-on display uh, of the person uh, could be uh, decreased. But the, we have the uh, social interaction, like a conversation or like touching or hearing in the real world. So uh, we can uh, feel that the uh, clear existence of the person. So I think that's the one of the benefit of changing the body representation in a real world environment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shin from Sony, Sony Computer Science Laboratory. Uh, thank you for a great talk. So I have a question. So your system provided some kind of very small person perspective for the user. Mm -hmm. But uh, what about some the, how other people mm -hmm. perceive the, that person? Mm -hmm. Because in, in the system, still the, some people can look at the, his face. Yep. But, but real social interaction should be like a kind of small person versus the usual person. So how yep. do you think about that? Yep. Uh, thank you for your uh, interesting question. So actually, uh, I think there's uh, several uh, solutions for that, like uh, displaying the wearer's uh, face on the, around the camera area to make a, a eye contact between a real face and a camera position. So uh, yeah, maybe yeah, we can discuss the another implementation, implementation method. OK, thank you so much. Great yeah. job, thank you. Let's thank uh, Yoon again thank and you. all the speakers of the session. Find Vino and other speakers of the session after the session in the coffee break. Enjoy the rest of your day.